Pretty neat, huh? That is from a fan-made Halo game centered around the Flood called Branching Sickness, and it has been in development for a moment now. Everything shown so far has been stunning, and the quality that has gotten into this project is clearly visible on every single post. The group working on it happen to be super cool people, and they've given me the all clear to use photos and videos that they have put up on their social media platforms for this video. I am linking everything below. Please, please, emphasis on the please, go show them some support. They are amazing people and they deserve and their project deserves some attention also a disclaimer a lot of what i am showing today is old and does not represent the project as it is currently and to give incentive for all of you to check out their stuff i'm not going to show off everything there are quite a few goodies on their stuff that i think you should go check out so everything is linked below whenever you're done watching this video or maybe you want to go check it out now and come back please go check out their stuff that said, if you happen to enjoy this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps me out, and if you feel like gaming with me or chatting online, I have a Discord and an Instagram dedicated to my artwork linked below. That said, let's get you right into this floody goodness. Let's start out with the best part, the flood itself, and my god does it look good. Starting with the infection form, it is definitely reminiscent of the Halo 2 anniversary infection form, with the difference being the length of the tentacles and an extended waist. It's clearly got more of a spider-like feel to it, and the sensory nodes are a little less wispy and branch-like, like they are in other games, and more akin to sensory organs that you'd find on gastropods, like snails. It's definitely more meaty, like the Halo 2 Anniversary and Halo Wars 2 infection forms, unlike the more fungal, saggy feel of the Halo CE and 2 infection forms. Very cool, I can't wait to see these little guys. Well, they're not so little when you think about it, ranging from 3 to 4.4 feet in height, give or take. We also have the carrier forms, and this is very much a unique take on the carrier form. Universally in Halo, the carrier form is an amalgamation of biomass collected from the corpses not suitable to become combat forms, or it is made from aged combat forms. There is no bioluminescence, and it's more or less a bulging, heavy skin sack filled with infection forms that are wriggling to get out. Here, the shape of the body is very much the same, however, this combat form, or I should say carrier form, <laughs> is bioluminescent, with yellow sacs protruding from its body. We also presumably got a sneak peek at the noises it makes when idle. Bear in mind though, this is pretty old and it may have been changed. <laughs> Variants of the traditional flood forms have also been confirmed via the spore form, very much like the carrier form, except it secretes a cloud of flood spores. In the words of the team, the spore carrier's attack is an area of denial style attack. After activation, the spore carrier releases a lingering cloud of damaging flood spores. Pretty cool, and it will be interesting to see how this is implemented. It can make for some pretty damn difficult situations if you're running away from a horde of infection forms down a corridor. It could lead to a, you know, a tricky situation that the player will need to account for. Interestingly enough, it resembles a traditional carrier form more than the actual carrier form than anything. And here comes my favorite of the flood forms we've seen so far, the Flood Goliath. I couldn't find much on the description of this bad boy, but this thing looks horrifying and the work that has been shown off for it speaks measures. Firstly, taking a look at it, we have never seen a flood form like this before. It is clearly meant to be unsettling with the skull-like face. It gives a lot of HP Lovecraft vibes, you know, a few Cthulhu vibes. These early concepts of it show just how large it really is. We have also been shown some early animations from a while back. This one is a melee attack, meaning you probably don't want to get too close to it. We also have an animation of a ranged attack, meaning you will have to do more than just keep your distance and shoot. It seems like this is generally a form you're gonna want to avoid when possible. We also have an idle animation and a walking animation. All in all, this thing looks like a behemoth of a flood form that you do not want to mess with. 
There are definitely other flood forms as shown by the trailer they dropped earlier and it's nice to see that the flood are finally getting some proper love after years of neglect. This next bit is relatively short, but I wanted to take a moment to talk about the character you will presumably be playing as, Sergeant Noah. The design of the character is definitely interesting, and I am curious to see the story behind him. Looking at his armor, it's interesting in the sense that it takes from a lot of different armors in Halo lore. I can see bits of the Marine battle dress uniform from the early Covenant War Insurrection era, namely in the helmet. I also see bits of the Installation 00 Marine variant from Halo Wars 2, namely the boxy shape of it but I also get some serious Mjolnir vibes. Uh, I doubt Noah is a Spartan, so I'm wondering if this is some sort of makeshift armor or perhaps something experimental. We'll, we'll see. So now moving on to equipment. Let's start out with the most iconic Halo weapon, the Assault Rifle. This one is highly reminiscent of Halo 5's MA5D individual combat weapon system, implying to me, at least, that this game is set sometime around 2557 when the rifle became more standard issue within the wider UNSC, though bear in mind the weapon has existed as early as 2525. Looking at screenshots they have shown off, it has a standard 32 round magazine not unlike other games. Next up and equally as iconic, the Magnum. Very reminiscent of the 2546 model of the M6G seen in Halo Reach. Taking a look at early work in progress videos, we can see the Magnum wasn't always like this. In fact, it was a lot more reminiscent of the M6C a while ago. I'm pretty sure for the sake of making it easier on the team, this does not mean that there are multiple weapon variants. I think this is just a typical case of changes made during development, and that is solely normal. Here is the Energy Sword, and looking at its design, it is reminiscent of Halo 3's Energy Sword. It looks pretty damn neat, not much to say about it though. Moving on to the Battle Rifle, it seems to be the BR-55 HB variant, albeit with a darker paint job though it could just be the lighting. Looks pretty cool. Other firearms are confirmed to be in the game, however, to encourage all of you to check out the Branching Sickness social media, I will leave them out of the video, as well as certain animations that have been shown off. That said, let's look at some other things that will be in the game. So the frag grenades look interesting, and they have a very smooth design. The concepts for the plasma grenade looks neat, here's, here's both of them right now. We also have an in-engine render of the firebomb, which is making an appearance. I love that orange glow, by the way. Looking at some old footage, a flashlight appears to be in the game, though perhaps that has been changed. A knife model has also been revealed, which tells me, contrary to the heaps of ammunition in the screenshots, we're gonna have to survive with just a knife a lot like it's Resident Evil. Oh boy! By the way, I, I do love that. I am very much down for that. Looking at one particular screenshot, we can see that pulse grenades are in the game, so that's pretty cool. The world of Branching Sickness is an intriguing one indeed. Not much is known about it, however, we have gotten some looks at it through concept art and in-engine renders, as well as some in-game renders. We also have received a little bit of information about how the world would be generated. On the Branching Sickness Twitter account, we got a look at a spot we are going to be exploring in-game, followed by a statement saying, in-engine renders and a first look at some of the spaces we will be procedurally generating, or connecting, I should say, to give you, the player, a unique game experience each time you play. In other words, each time you play, the layout of the map will be different. This actually works in the game's favor. Another small-scale fan-made project that did something similar a long time ago was SCP Containment Breach. It's another small-scale horror project, and it pulled it off brilliantly. Even when the players had an idea of what they had to look for, they didn't automatically know where they were. Speaking as someone who was obsessed with Containment Breach for a while, I can say with confidence that I had fun no matter how many times I played it, and I was always thoroughly spooked. Looking at concept art and renders, it seems like the game is going to start with either a crashed pelican or at the very least on the surface of a world full of Forerunner artifacts, and as you progress, you go deeper and deeper into the planet. I'm excited to see what they pull off.
Forensic Sickness is a project that I am going to be following very closely. The team is putting in a lot of time and effort into this project, and it is very clear that their goal is to make the highest quality game that they can, and they are taking their time with it. Originally, on June 10th, they had planned on giving us a gameplay demonstration. However, the team came out stating that they felt the game was not ready to be shown off yet. And you know what? That's a good sign. They're being realistic about the state of the project and recognize what is best for it. They aren't exactly a multi-million dollar AAA making developer, so good on them. I can't wait to see where this project goes. Now, for a Q&A. At the end of videos such as these, I answer questions submitted by you guys. I like doing these, so if you want me to answer a question, uh, and you, and you, you want it featured in a video, please follow my Instagram. I put the prompts on my story for you to respond to, and have at it.